If you travel outside the United States, it's helpful to be familiar with the metric system. To change from one system of measurement to another, we can use ratios, called conversion factors. To find a ratio you can use to convert centimeters to inches, we can start by carefully measuring the length or width of several different objects in both units. Here are some measurements in both inches and centimeters. We see that a 5 and 3 quarter inch long pen is 14.7 centimeters long, so we measured the pen twice, once in inches and once in centimeters. To find out how many centimeters there are in each inch, we can divide centimeters by inches. I'm using an Excel spreadsheet to help with the calculations. I want to divide centimeters by inches. I can do centimeters divided by inches for the pen, and then tell a spreadsheet to do the same thing for the other objects. Now we have a list of ratios with centimeters to inches. Looking at the list, we notice they're all pretty close. One way to represent the ratio of centimeters to inches as a single value is to use the median. So let's find the median of these centimeter to inches ratios. We can tell the spreadsheet to find the median for us by using the median command. When using a formula in Excel, always start with an equal sign. So the ratio of centimeters to inches is 2.54 to 1, or we could just say 2.54. So it takes 2.54 centimeters to make 1 inch. This number is the conversion factor between inches and centimeters. We can find conversion factors easily by doing a quick Google search. My measurements must have been pretty accurate because we were right on. Using this ratio, we can write and solve a proportion to convert centimeter measurements to inch measurements, and vice versa. One warning, when you set up a proportion, make sure both sides show centimeters to inches, or both sides show inches to centimeters. We can't have inches on top on one side, and centimeters on top on the other side. Here's how to convert 215 centimeters to inches we know there are 2.54 centimeters in one inch. We set up a proportion, and we keep the centimeters with centimeters, and we're looking for inches. We're going to invert, invert the proportion, because x is in the denominator. Multiply both sides by 215. 215 divided by 215 equals 1. So that leaves us with x by itself. Now we'll multiply 215 by 1 and divide by 2.54. 215 centimeters is about 84.6 inches. Here's how to convert 3.4 pounds into ounces. We know that 1 pound equals 16 ounces. We could ask Google if we forgot that. We set up our proportions with the pounds in the numerator and the ounces in the denominator. Once again, x is in the denominator, so we invert the proportion. Multiply both sides by 3.4, because 3.4 divided by 3.4 is just 1, leaving us with x all by itself. Three point four times sixteen equals fifty four point four. Three point four pounds equals fifty four point four ounces. Here's one for you to try. Convert eighty inches to centimeters. And here's the answer to check your work with. Feel free to hit the pause button. Some conversions require several steps. We can use a method called dimensional analysis for doing more complicated conversions. 
This method is completely different because we are not going to set up a proportion. A car traveled 500 kilometers on 45 liters of gas. Express the car's gas consumption in miles per gallon. Let's write this information as a ratio. 500 kilometers to 45 liters. Now we are going to multiply by a special version of the number 1 so we can cancel some units we don't want but not change the true meaning of the ratio. By the way, sometimes we start with just one number instead of a ratio. It just depends on what information we start with. Let's figure out how many kilometers there are in one mile. Google can help us with that. One mile is the same as 1.61 kilometers. We want to cancel the units, so we're going to multiply by one mile over 1.61 kilometers so that the kilometers will cancel. Notice that we are just multiplying by a special version of the number 1 because 1 mile is the same as 1.61 kilometers. The kilometers cancel and we're left with miles. But we don't want miles per liter, we want miles per gallon. So now we want to cancel the liters. But how many liters are there in a gallon? 3.79, we could get that from Google. The liters go on top because with dimensional analysis we are trying to cancel the units we don't want, like liters. Now the only units we have are miles and gallons. Notice that the fractions we used to cancel the units were systematically chosen to move us towards getting miles in the numerator and gallons in the denominator. We multiply across the numerator, multiply across the denominator, we can go 1,895 miles with 72.45 gallons. But we want to know how many miles we can go with one gallon. So we divide 1,895 by 72.45. We get about 26 miles for every gallon or 26 miles per gallon. 26 miles per gallon is a special kind of rate called a unit rate because it has a denominator of 1. For every 1 gallon increase in fuel we can go 26 more miles. There are examples of unit rates all around us. 65 miles per hour, an allowance of $10 per week, or a lobster that costs $5.88 per pound. We use unit rates so often because they make calculations easier in many real life situations. And they make it easier to compare things. Here's one for you to try. Use any method you wish. If you live 2.5 miles from school, how many inches is that? Notice that you are starting with a single measurement instead of a ratio. You can get the conversion factors you need from Google if needed. And here's an answer to help you check your work. Feel free to pause the video. In this unit we learn two different ways to convert measurements to different units. Proportions and dimensional analysis. Along the way we reviewed our English measurement system and the metric system. Mm -hmm.